Hello, my name is Michael. I do data analysis and develop pipelines for Barsky Lab at Cincinnati Children's Hospital Medical Center. Today, I'm going to share my experience as a user of Common Workflow Language. As a real-life example, I will refer to our recently published paper where we described the protocols and refactory data analysis from the study related to the linkage between cholesterol metabolism and two different subtypes of pancreatic cancer. It included five single-cell datasets divided into two groups. As all our CWL workflows are usually run in data analysis platform called SiteDub, the newly developed single-cell pipelines are not exemption from this rule. However, they also can be run in any other CWL-based execution environment. Our main motivation for developing the pipelines in CWL format was simply not being able to reproduce the results from the original paper. Because in the original study, the data analysis was conducted by manual command line and R processing. That basically means that just simply repeating the sequence of commands is likely to produce different results for different users due to the following reasons. First of all, because of the changes in the tools and libraries. For example, CellRanger, one of the most commonly used tools for single-cell data alignment, has already got at least two major updates since the time the original study had been conducted. Another tool, called Surat, is a state-of-the-art R package for single-cell data integration and clustering, and it also got a major update that is not fully compatible with the previous version. Of course, we could try to install the specific versions of those tools and try to reproduce the original results. However, in future we would need to do it every time when we want to come back to our original research. Additionally, sometimes it's not a trivial task to install a specific version of our package. And that brings up another problem. We cannot reproduce the same execution environment. Moreover, for some of the users who want to run data analysis on, let's say, HPC cluster, it's not even possible to directly control which version of R is installed. And last but not least are human mistakes. If you need to manually run multiple tools for multiple datasets, there is a high risk of making mistakes. Thus, having a formalized standard for describing tools, workflows, and input parameters, as well as being able to repeat the same execution environment, are fundamental in making your data analysis reproducible. That's why we develop our pipelines in CWL format. Single-cell sequencing is a relatively new technology that allows to collect data from each cell separately. As this is an area of particular interest for biologists, more and more tools appear every year. Here, I'll briefly describe the basic outline of single-cell RNA-seq data analysis. Although it is completely automated in SiteDub, on this slide we can see which CWL workflows and in which order are executed, as well as which command line tools can be used when running data processing manually. The data analysis can be roughly split into routine tasks that take the most time and efforts, and the actual analysis that brings some biological value. Unfortunately, the pre-processing steps require the most computational resources and time. Data analysis usually starts with generating reference genome indices for, in our case, CellRanger. On the next step, we map each of our datasets to that reference genome using CellRanger count workflow. As a result, we have feature barcode matrices for all five datasets. And then, because in this particular case, we are interested in analyzing all five datasets jointly, we run CellRanger aggregate pipeline. Once all of these preprocessing steps are finished, we can proceed to the clustering analysis. At this step, being able to iteratively run the same pipeline and reproduce exactly the same results is particularly important. It is important because the results of clustering pipeline that consists of multiple steps depends on a lot of parameters. When adjusting them, you might need to rerun the same analysis several times. So you are probably more interested in seeing how, let's say, a different filtering threshold influences the number of viable cells, rather than how the latest software update on the HPC cluster made everything look completely different. On the right side of the slide, we can see how different versions of CIRAT package produced different results with exactly the same input parameters. In the next couple of slides, I'm going to show you the results of our CWL workflow run and visualized on SiteUp. I intentionally skipped data preprocessing steps with CellRanger, as those are mostly routine tasks that are not of particular interest for us. 
As we can see here, most of the clustering results are split between separate tabs. To achieve that, SideUp uses a system of plugins that extend the CWL syntax with the category and plot type for each produced workflow output. For example, the quality control metrics that are important in single-cell data analysis are shown in these plots. Here we can see the density distributions, violin and scatter plots for the main QC metrics with applied filtering thresholds. All of these plots are mostly used when defining which cells should be discarded and which should be kept in the next part of the analysis. This is one of the most important steps that may require multiple reruns of the same workflow. And on this slide, we can see the main clustering results visualized in built-in UCSC cell browser. It allows us to interactively explore clusters, main QC metrics, assign cell types, and gene expression levels. Additionally, our clustering pipeline generates violin and dot plots for specific genes of interest. By evaluating the expression of those genes, we can manually assign and validate cell types for each of the identified clusters. As a starting point, we also generate a table of all gene markers for all clusters. That data can be used for cell types assignment as well. Thank you for your attention. If you have any questions, please refer to our GitHub repositories.